Pistol Defense Counterattack 5. How to disarm a gunman that has a pistol pointed to the back of your head? That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, I'm Dylan, leader of Phantom Force. We're a mercenary team, yet we're not for hire. We've taken a long-term contract with some Hollywood executives to make movies. They wanted to bring more realism to the film, and we agreed. So if you love action movies and like to see some of our work, click on the link below this video to watch some great action movies for free. It's paid for by our awesome sponsors. Yeah, enough of that for now. Our team helps military personnel, law enforcement, politicians, and civilians in high-risk areas survive life-threatening situations by leveraging proven real-world tactics for real-world situations. Each week we share another, what others would describe as, seemingly impossible situation, along with a simple, time-tested, combat-proven technique for overcoming it. So let's get right to it. Pistol Defense Counter-Attack 5. How to disarm a gunman as a pistol to the back of your head. Side note, all the techniques that we share with you are taken from the martial arts system that we're trained in, CBT, Commando Battle Tactics. In position? Okay, so hopefully this never happens to you, all right? Yet say someone tries to abduct you, rob you, or take you hostage. The, uh, the most important thing is do not go with them. What they're trying to do is take you to a secondary crime scene. Few people survive when taken there. Think about it for a minute. If they're willing to shoot you now in a potentially public place where you feel safe, what do you think they're going to do to you once they take you someplace else? All right. So uh, what we're going to do first is demonstrate the counterattack, then explain the strategy behind why it works and then how it works. And this is important. Cypher, another member of our team, will be the attacker. Cypher is finishing up another assignment, so for now we'll keep his identity concealed. Okay, okay. I don't have any money on me. Can we go to an ATM machine to get some? Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Stop. On your feet. We're going to demonstrate that from the other side so you can see both angles. Now this will could work. It works whether they're pressing it against your head, they have it a few inches away from your head, or even if they have it down here in your lower back or kidneys, it doesn't matter. And again, we'll explain why why that works uh, next. Okay, okay. I don't have any money on me. Can we go to the ATM machine and get some? Bang bang, bang bang. Stop. On your feet. Okay, here's a strategy behind why it works. And strategy is so very important. It's not about having fancy techniques that look flashy and good. It's about having simple techniques that are going to work each and every time. Regardless of how amped up you might be or hyper you might be in a situation, you're going to produce the same consistent outcome. So here's why the technique works, beat by beat. In position. So the most important thing to know is that there's only one instantly lethal end of a firearm, right? Bam, right there. So when that, when anything that comes out of that end, it's going to kill whatever is in front of it. So this, you're killed. This, you're alive. This, you're killed. This, you're alive. It's a matter of inches between life and death. This is important to understand because you don't have to be all the way over here to survive literally from here to here. So in the first beat, what we do is we want to determine where that instantly lethal end is, especially when they're behind you. Other places you can already see it. So this is why, again, it doesn't matter whether it's in the back of the head, center of the back, or whatever, because the first thing you do is you always turn, and then you always capitulate. Give them what they, what they want. Put your hand up in surrender fashion. Okay, okay. Right? Yet now you've identified where the pistol is. And you want to always keep that pistol in sight once you do it so you know exactly where you're going to act so once you move uh, now that's the that's where you determine how the pistol is now once you go into action you're going to see 
how we address the uh, how we adjust the actual pistol. So from here, turn we see the pistol. We're here on the one now. Once we go into action, there's an attack. Now you notice what happens here. We always grab the uh, the, the usually the wrist and the pistol. This is a concept called rooting. We want to keep them right there. Other systems or other you know videos you may see or people are doing stuff like this and everything. Yeah, or here and kicking and stuff. Yet the easiest counter tag is while you're sitting there trying to grab them, they just take a step rearward, take a step rearward, and then and then pull the pistol back and they shoot you. You know, so that again, when you're here, they'll take a step back and pull a rip pistol away. Take a step back and take, pull the pistol away, bam, and then they just shoot you just instead. So the key thing is you want to keep them right here in that spot. So now when you go into action, you don't want to cause any uh, collateral damage. So this is the second part of the strategy. There's only three places uh, to point the pistol because you don't want to go into action and then you know some people walking past get shot in the process, right? You're going to point it either up at the sky, into the ground, or into them. Those are the three acceptable places where the pistol should point, nowhere else. And you'll notice that as we do the techniques in this video and other videos, that the, the, uh, the pistol always points in that place. Now I'm going to go ahead and move through the rest of the technique just so you understand. This is all the stuff that has to happen before you go into action. If you are not addressing this, you know, it most likely won't work because if you just sit there and try to launch into a technique without, you know, just, you know, uh, using the things that we share with you, there's a good possibility you'll still get shot. Okay. So number three, here's the psychological component. It's called distract attack. And this is important because you never want them, you never want their brain focused on abducting you or robbing you. You always want them distracted by something else. And the way that we do that is we always say yes to whatever their demands are, and then we pose a question. The most, the easiest way to engage the human brain is to pose a question. Because we're solution oriented, we want to come with an answer for it. Whether it's right or wrong, our brain wants to come with an answer. So if they say, oh, give me your money, you say, okay, okay, I don't have any. Can we go to my car and get some? Or, okay, okay, I don't have any on me. Can we go to an ATM machine and get some? Now, right then, that, that's music to their ears. And they're thinking, well, heck, maybe, yeah, right? So now their brain is engaged in that process. They're about to reply. And as they're starting to talk and verbalize their answer, that's when you strike. So that's what you want to do. You don't just want to make a statement. You want to actually pose a question that's going to make them think. It gets their mind off of shooting you or holding you, taking you hostage. And the moment they start talking, their jaws start moving, that's when you strike and you attack. Because they're not thinking about you, they're actually focused now on talking. All right? So uh, if it's an abduction situation and they say, oh, they put a pistol to the back of your head and say, oh, get in the car. You say, okay, okay, front seat or back seat? And they go, oh, well, well, I'm going to keep an eye on you. Front seat. Or they say, oh, get in the trunk. Yeah, that's the whole point. In that moment when they're replying, that's when you act. So this is, this is how the whole technique works, the whole setup works. Now, uh, just so you know, most people sharing combat techniques on YouTube are usually promoting a school or an upcoming event. Yeah, we have nothing for sale, not us, we don't do that. Everything's taken care of by our sponsors. They provide anything from weapons and accessories, gear, equipment, travel, guided tours, and more. Definitely you know, check out their, uh, the links below this video. All right, so that is step three. Step four is actually uh, doing the technique. And I'm gonna do it this time facing the camera so you can get a better angle of it. Uh, in position. Okay, okay. I don't have any money on me. Can we go to the ATM to get some? Now, if you notice, the pistol is pointed down the ground. I'm grabbing and bringing it right here into my rib cage. Boom. What this means is he can't shoot me now. All he can shoot is into the ground if, if he pulls the trigger. The other thing is this is called a back fist, and this is coming to the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is the is the only bone. In the skull is concave inward. It's a knockout point. Some people call it the temple. It's actually called the sphenoid bone. When you do a, a back fist like this, you don't need any type of training. Any type of significant training is hitting with the knuckles, the three knuckles of this fist, right? When you hit just like, like there, it can either finish them or render them unconscious, or at the very least it turns their head and makes them face away from you. So it renders you invisible. Right, so that's on the first beat. So they're rooted, so he can't take a step back. Try to take a step back. Can't take a step back, right? And he's being hit at the same time, right? That's beat one. Beat two, if you take a step forward and we do a palm thrust to the side of his jaw. 
This renders him unconscious. If not, at the very least, it dislocates his jaw and also turns his face that way. So what you're noticing is that we're finishing or maiming on each and every beat. This is the important thing. You don't know which strike is going to finish him or put him down. That's why everyone has to have a specific target. You just can't be punching people all over the place. It has to be laser focused. Precision, precision, precision. So again, I'm going to do the whole technique from start to finish slowly. So you can see it again on camera from this angle. In position. Okay, okay. You want me to get in the front seat or the back seat? Now, right here, you notice the transition from here. His weight is this way. We come back here and we do a downward stop onto the side of his knee joint. Again, the angle is about a 45 degree angle like this. And this is designed to dislocate the knee, again, maiming him. If he's skilled, he may turn into it like Cypher's doing to avoid the dislocation. It doesn't matter. It is still trying the same way. So this comes in, you notice we got the, the hand, the arm is still grabbed, the pistol is now grabbed. And while this motion is going on, a pistol disarm takes place. And I'm going to show you how this looks. Now, if you want to disarm a pistol, one of the easiest ways to do it is you simply turn the pistol into the forearm. So he's holding the pistol here, turn it into the forearm, you see it just strips him. It doesn't matter what position he's in, if it's like this or like this or like this. All you have to do is turn the pistol into their own forearm. And if his thumb gets caught up in a trigger and he pulls it, he shoots himself. That was position three, pointed at them. So that's what's going to happen. So it never matters what position you're in, if you can grab the forearm, and you can grab the pistol, just turn the pistol into itself, or into their form rather, and that's how you disarm it. That's what's happening all at the same time. When we come up here and we stop to break or dislocate the knee joint, and you see the pistol uh, is now uh, dis he's disarmed of the pistol. Now he'll continue to fall. You step rear, we're going to continue to fall. He's positioning so you can still see him on the camera. And, and once they fall to the ground, you're going to do what's called number five, are using double taps. And what double taps are is with a pistol is that you aim once and you pull the trigger or press the trigger twice. There's something else called control pairs. We won't get into in this video. Get in close quarters and CQB, use double taps. Your target for the first double tap is the abdomen. Uh, the abdomen is good to prevent a charge. So if someone's charging you and trying to come back at you, putting a double tap in the abdomen causes them to buckle forward. All right. So the first double tap, bang, bang, into the abdomen, causing the buckle forward. The second double tap, bang, bang, into that triangle or somewhere into the brain case. Just know that. And somewhere in the brain case, and that puts them down. So uh, this is important to know, again, the targets. If you're shooting them in the leg, you shoot them in the shoulder, they can still come back at you. You put in the abdomen, a double tap, bang, bang, and the brain case, bang, bang. That's it. Now, finally, is step six. These are act called after action drills. And again, we can do another video on, on the specifics of it. And what you do is your finger still on the trigger, you follow them down to the ground with your finger on the trigger. And you ask yourself this question, are they down? If they're not, give them another double tap. If they are, then the next thing you want to do is you want to check and find out if they have any buddies. And you ask yourself this question, are there any more? Your finger comes off the trigger, raise along the slide, raise your head slightly, and you're going to scan from 10 o'clock position to 2 o'clock position, then back to the last known threat, and then you come back to the guard position or this position here. And again, so I'm going to flow through the whole thing, bang, bang, and 10, scan 2, back here. And I ask myself, are they down? Yes. Are there any more of them? If there are any more of them, give them a double tap. If they're not, you go back to the last known target, and then go back to the guard position. All right, this is why the technique works. With a little bit of practice, you'd be surprised how simple this stuff is. Okay? If you have any questions about today's technique or you have, uh, you'd like to see the solution to another situation, simply leave them in the comments below this video. Combat Q&A! Okay, now it's time for our segment, Combat Q&A. We actually answer your questions. Here we go. Okay. What's a good statement to say to frighten off criminals and get people around you to come to your aid? Vasquez, you want to handle this one? Sure. This is from our psychological warfare curriculum. We live by the mantra, work smarter, not harder. 
You may or may not know this, but simply calling for help has been proven ineffective. People just don't listen. They either think that you're joking around or they're too afraid to get involved. There have been documented cases where women are raped and killed while their neighbors are watching from inside their home. So here's a practical statement that both men and women can use to protect themselves. That is, officer in need of assistance. You have to continually shout, officer in need of assistance, until aid arrives. We normally use this statement when we're tactically retreating. First, the bad guy is afraid because they think that they've messed with the police officer, causing them to run away. Secondly, bystanders hear this and they come to the aid of the police officer. They also call 911 to notify that one of their own is under attack. Third of all, this is the most powerful statement because every off-duty officer, uniform officer, undercover officer, and even retired officer will come out of the shadows to help one of their own. You will literally have an army of people coming towards you to provide assistance. Afterward, when you talk to the police, you can explain the situation and why you did this. They may be a little bit perturbed, but they will understand. Remember that a phrase that you can use to protect yourself is officer in need of assistance. You need to continually state officer in need of assistance until aid, until help comes your way. Please remember to share this with your wives, husbands, brothers, sisters, friends, and family, because this may save their lives. Dylan, do you have anything to add to this statement? Pretty much covered everything. There are some organizations that teach to use the word, to shout the word fire, 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 fire. The thinking is that, you know, people, when they hear fire, they actually run towards the sound of someone shouting fire because they want to see a house burning down. Or they want to see a commercial building, anything on fire, you know, and it does work. It is effective. You do get people actually will come running to you if you shout fire. It may not always be the help that you want. You know, the fact you're getting eyeballs on you, it does help. Yet in no way does it compare to the powerful statement, uh, officer need of assistance. Because then you get, like, like Vasquez said, an army of people showing up, police officers showing up, and that's the kind of help you want uh, actually coming to your aid. So definitely hit a bullseye uh, with that one. Uh, if you want to uh, have us answer any questions on the show, doesn't matter how far fetched your question may be, simply post them in the comments below. Enjoy this video? Then do us a huge favor and share with two or three military personnel, law enforcement, politicians, or civilians that you know might need it. They'll definitely thank you for it. Plus, make sure you subscribe to our channel right now so you don't miss out on our weekly videos. We learn innovative techniques for overcoming even the most life-threatening of situations. And before we go, if you enjoy watching action movies and like to see some of our work, go to bestnewactionmovies.com or simply click on the link below this video. Again, I'm Dylan with Phantom Force. Don't miss our next video when we cover your handcuffed and kneeling with a pistol to the front of your head. See you next video.